Okay, we are rolling. It's the Penn State breakdown with this guy, Adam Brenneman, former Penn State tight end, former UMass great. I'm going to say great. I great. think you earned Thank it. Thank you. <laughs> Adam, uh, it is Rutgers week for Penn State. They just had an impressive win against Wisconsin. Made it look really easy. I was surprised how easy they made it look. This Rutgers game doesn't figure to be all that competitive. Penn State's really owned the series 26-2. and two. So for this week, we're going to do things a little different. Uh, earlier in the week, we kind of asked some people on social media for their questions and comments about the Penn State program. We got a lot of great responses, so thanks to you guys. And we've, we've highlighted a couple that we're going to talk about. I'm going to bring them up, get your thoughts, and we're just going to see where this uh, segment takes us. What could possibly go Let's wrong? Let's do it. All right. The first one we got that we want to talk about, and I'm just going to, just going to read it. One thing that seems to be missing from the offense this year is the long ball down the field. It used to be so important to open things up in the past few years. He's talking about, obviously, yeah. Joe Moorhead's offense, the contested catch. They don't have Chris Godwin. They don't have Mike Jasicki, even Deshaun Hamilton. But it does seem like, you know, if they don't get the ball to K.J. Hamler in space, they're not going to be able to generate many long plays in the passing game. Do you think they can rediscover this in the next couple of games and maybe the bowl game, or is this something that's going to be a priority in the offseason? Yeah, I think – you said it. They're they're missing kind of that personnel that that uh, can go up and, and catch the, the the deep ball and the deep threat. I mean, especially you know you look at you know uh, Hamler and DeAndre are kind of the, the speed guys they yeah. have, and they are deep threats. Mm -hmm. But you know more so more often than not, when you're playing Big Ten defenses, no one's going to be running wide open down the field. So you're going to have to make contested catches. Their contested catch guy is really Juwan Johnson, mm -hmm. um, who's you know, struggled some this season and hasn't played in for a couple weeks now. Your guy, Juwan Johnson. My guy, Juwan Johnson. Yeah, big Juwan Johnson fan, but uh, you know, hopefully he comes back right. and, they, and they get that kind of jump ball threat back. They also had Mike Kosicki last year, right. who was going up and making those mm -hmm. plays. Pat Fryer's played really well. But I don't know if he's a Mike Kosicki type athlete yet, um, going up and making contested catches like that. And then the other thing is you got to be able to run the ball consistently. Mm -hmm. uh, to open up the, the deep passing game, which is what Joe Moorhead did all the time. Right. Uh, you know, having Saquon Barkley really helps a lot, and, and Miles has obviously played well, but you know, if they want to keep taking these shots down the field and be able to co convert, uh, you got to take shots on first and second down, right. which we haven't really seen very much, and you got to be able to run the ball yeah. so that so the, de the defense can't sit back and, and, just, uh, and just play you know, 10 yards mm -hmm. off the ball. So. I think uh, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. Hopefully, as the receivers uh, develop mm -hmm. a little more, they'll they'll find that deep ball threat. So moving forward, I just want to follow up uh, for the future. Maybe not so much for this year. A player that I think can bring that element is Justin Shorter. If he's yeah. if he's as good as his recruiting tape suggests, do you see maybe him? You know, they're up, clearly they're going to probably redshirt him this year. He's played in two games. Um, if he can stay healthy next year, what? Maybe would that would that be would he bring that dimension maybe to the passing game? Oh yeah, I mean he's a he's a guy. I actually got to see him in person play last year uh, at the opening out in Oregon when mm -hmm. I was a counselor there. He was one of the one of the uh, the prospects that were there playing. I mean he dominated that that scene right. with the, the best high school players all over the country, uh, going up and making catches, running by people, uh, making guys miss with the ball in his hands. So uh, I think he's got a shot to be really really special for Penn State. Uh, you know, I wish we would have seen him play a little more this right. season, but um, a variety of reasons that didn't happen. So I, he actually reminds me a little bit of Juwan Johnson. Um, I, I, the crush is already beginning. It's <laughs> he already reminds beginning me of Juwan just Shorter. kind of with the body type and, yeah. um, and kind of their athleticism. And I, I think that, you know, Justin's got a chance to be really, really good. Okay. Let's move it along. Another question, and clearly when we ask Penn State fans for questions, invariably we're going to get at least one about Tommy Stevens. We, we got, got about six. We got about <laughs> six, but I think the one we like the most uh, goes to something like this. Does Tommy Stevens, Penn State's backup quarterback, have the skill set necessary to take over the offense next year? It seems that 99% of what he does is run the ball. Is he just another Nick Fitzgerald? That's, uh, that's Joe Moorhead's quarterback yeah. at Mississippi State. All run, little pass. Yeah. Uh, I think Tommy brings uh, both those elements to the game. Uh, he's he's a, a big enough guy. He's six four. I mean, Tommy's a big yeah. dude. Uh, to be a pocket passer, he can take the hits in the pocket. Um, but you know what he brings to the table is is that athleticism. Yeah. And really, in, in in college football nowadays, you have to be an athletic quarterback. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, we, we rarely see any quarterbacks that can't run nowadays. Uh, so I, I think Tommy can throw the ball. You know, 
I, I, we know he has a strong arm. I think it's more of the mental part of the game for Tommy and being comfortable sitting back there in the pocket and, 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 uh, and reading the defense and not just, you know, when pressure comes, scrambling. You yeah. know, because you know, Trace obviously is, is as good of a runner as there is at quarterback. Uh, but what we see him do time and time again is stay in the pocket and right. not bail. Uh, when 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 he comes under pressure, and that's kind of what separates a really good quarterback from just a scrambler, kind of like Nick, Nick Fitzgerald. Nick, Nick Fitzgerald is going to have problems, you know, especially at the next level, right. uh, just because he relies on his feet so much. And and I think, you know, let's remember that quarterback competition, uh, which was now three was that three years ago now? Yeah, two thousand sixteen. Two thousand sixteen, mm-hmm. two years ago, was really really close between mm-hmm. Trace and Tommy. I mean, from you know, some of what I've heard inside the program, I mean that that was a neck and neck battle the whole time. So. I think Tommy has waited patiently, uh, mm-hmm. and hopefully, hopefully, you know, when his time comes next year, I, I don't really think there's going to be a quarterback battle next year. That was another question we got, so I answered two right there. I don't really think there'll be a true battle. Tommy's going to be the quarterback next season, and you know, I think he'll, I think he'll take over and, and be a really good pocket passer for him. You know, somewhere Sean Clifford's going to watch this video, and he's going to be shaking his well, head. Well, his time's coming he's soon, He's probably going to be muttering up sentences <laughs> under his breath in association with your name, but I like, I like the call. I did find it interesting that, that James Franklin this week basically said they're using Tommy as essentially That's a backup running, back. running yeah. back to Miles because of the loss of Mark Allen. I just thought it was funny because yeah. Mark Allen is not a very big guy. Yeah. And the opposite very different. The, yeah. Opposite <laughs> end of the spectrum, factor. you have Tommy yeah. Stevens, who I think might be close to 245 right now. He holds it well. But I'll just be curious to see what James does mm-hmm. uh, at quarterback uh, next year. One more to get to, and this is going to be a defensive question. I think it's mm-hmm. a really good comment question, um, and I think it's appropriate. Uh, it's about Penn State f- defensive line coach Sean Spencer. Sean Spencer doing another great job. I hope PSU is willing to put up the money to keep him. We can't lose a coach for another lateral move. I think that's yeah. also in reference to losing Josh Gaddis. They weren't going to be able to keep Joe Moorhead. Yeah. I don't know what your thoughts are on, on Charles Huff, but Josh Gaddis, a lot of people think they're, they're tying the drop passes and maybe the lack of production and maybe the, the off years from Tompkins and Juwan Johnson yeah. and maybe his absence. I don't know if that's fair, but Sean Spencer, I mean, I, you just look at what he's been able to do since mm-hmm. he took over in 2014. It's, you know, Carl Nassib was an All-American. He was reserved. Anthony yeah. Zettel, Austin Johnson. And now we're seeing uh, a lot of people thought Sharif Miller would be really good this year, and he's starting to play very well. Yeah. But Etor Gross Matos has been, just been, been yeah. unbelievable in his second year. Um, 13, uh, 15 and a half tackles for loss, got a great shot to get to 20. Um, what do you see from Spencer? Why do you think he's able to connect um, with the players the way yeah, that he has? I mean, Coach Spence has been a, he's been a rock star. He was a rock star at Vanderbilt uh, mm-hmm. when he was there. Um, you know, recruits really well, which is so much of what it takes to be a good college football coach is, is the recruiting aspect of it. Uh, and he's been able to develop his players. You know, you go back to even Larry Johnson at Penn State. There's kind of yeah. that tradition right. of developing big-time defensive linemen at Penn State. He's done a great job. And I think, you know, the important part for Coach Franklin, and he's been able to do this for the most part, is, is to keep your staff intact season to season. Uh, we saw a couple lateral moves, starting with Bob Shoup when he left as a defensive coordinator, which was you know a whole case mm-hmm. of its own. Uh, Gaddis and and Huff, you know, leave in for somewhat lateral moves. Uh, so I think you know if there's one thing that I've learned about Coach Franklin and his staff is that staff is very loyal to him. He's been loyal to that staff. Uh, he brought them. You know that whole staff pretty much started off as Division two coaches and have, have right. moved up to you know where they are now. So I think uh, you know and then you talk about Brent Fry too, another coach that. Uh, Penn State's been battling year mm-hmm. to year to keep, uh, and I know he's turned down head coaching jobs to right. stay at Penn State so far. And uh, you know, I think eventually, you know, what you want for your staff is they all eventually want to be head coaches. Uh, I think pretty much everyone on that staff hopes someday they're they're running a big program. So uh, that's what you want from them. You're okay losing losing a guy like Joe Moorhead to be a head coach in the SEC. What you don't want is is guys moving laterally like Josh Gaddis did. Uh, so I, I think there's a there, there's a bunch of things you need to to uh, Evaluate in that scenario, but you know it comes down to two: the commitment from the administration. When they're going to have to pay these right. coaches, and they're going to need more and more money every year. So that's what it takes to run a big-time college football program: is a lot of money. Well, I'm not. I'm not going to end this segment until I put you on the spot at least once. So I just want to ask you: who is the better player now, and who is the be- who's going to be the better player down the line? Etor Gross Matos, Sharif Miller. What do you got, and why? So, you know, Matos has been. Definitely had a better season. You know, yeah, he's been he's sure. been a, a really big surprise for us. I, we didn't even talk about him right. at the beginning of the season, and um, you know, they're they're both kind of uh, 
different players in, in the sense that I think Sharif's a little bit better against the run mm -hmm. than, than Matos is, and, and Matos maybe a little bit better against the pass, you know, get, getting around the edge, and maybe moves a little bit better uh, mm -hmm. than, than Sharif. You know, I think they both have a chance to be really good players. Right. I think they'll both probably play in the NFL. Right. Um, and, and if Sean Spencer can stay and continue to develop those right. guys, uh, they, they, they got a really good shot. But I, I think I, if, it, if it's third and long, yeah. I, I want Matos rushing the passer. <laughs> I think that's the right answer. All right, that's going to be uh, a wrap for this edition of the Penn State Breakdown with Adam Brenneman. I want to thank everyone for their uh, questions and comments on social media. I think this was worth doing. Great, I think we're yeah. going to do it again. And you guys, make sure you enjoy uh, the Rutgers game.